Hi everybody and welcome to our Gen Con videos. I'm Dom and this is Podrick. We oh, are yeah. Cubicle 7 and um, we are giving loads of talks and seminars at Gen Con um, and uh, we realised of course that not everybody can join us. Um, so we are recapturing the magnificent, magnificence, what is it? Magnificence. I, magnificence. magnificence. I, I would have accepted either. Yeah. Um, the magnificence of the talks that we're certainly um, about to give in a few days' time, yep. as we're recording now, uh, in video format in advance. Yeah. High quality video format, uh, flawlessly presented. Exactly, yeah. Um, the, uh, in recording that video, we realized we ran over an awful lot because we probably talked a little bit too yep. much about Imperial Maledictum because we warmed topics and talked about them. So elsewhere, uh, you'll find an Imperial Maledictum video. Yep. If you keep watching this one, you're going to find out about uh, Warmer Fantasy Roleplay, uh, Warmer 40,000, Wrath and Glory, and um, age, uh, Warmer Age of Sigmar Soulbound. Indeed. Uh, so uh, watch on and uh, enjoy. Yeah, these are going to be choppy because yeah, we did them. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't have the money to replace them so with more competent AIs. So it's just us. Yeah. Sadly. Good luck. <laughs> on a little bit. So uh, the next up, I wanted to have a quick chat about Soulbound. Yeah. So um, Soulbound is our Age of Sigmar role playing game set in the Mortal Realms. Uh, it's been out and had a highly successful few years and mm. we'll have more ahead of it. Absolutely, there's um, lots to come. Um, we've got, uh, I mean, I think one of the things I love about Soulbound is it really captures that kind of, um, it's like high fantasy kind of, um, you know, high, higher power level um, yeah. adventure. I think the, um, that for, for me, that sort of, it's just like a really satisfying power level. You know, you, as you start, you start as a character that, that um, uh, is you know, really can do stuff, you yeah. know, and and um, can you know, fight off hordes of uh, of low level opponents and uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's the sort of game where you could have a greater team and be a problem, and the party go, okay, we've got to fight it, and, and, <laughs> and realistically have a chance of dealing with that. Um, yep, yeah. So it's it, it's a really yeah, it's a really nice high fantasy game, and the setting is for it is so broad that you can explore lots of different types of yeah. uh, game in it. Um, which I think leads nicely into Ulfenkarn, which Indeed. is our next book that will be out uh, quite soon. Yeah. Um, so we're very excited for that one. If you don't know what Ulfenkarn is, it's um, the setting of the Cursed City uh, board game, which is really, really intriguing. There's also a Black Library novel, a few other little bits and pieces, um, and we're taking that city and turning it into um, a full-on setting uh, where you can go and experience all the events of um, the board game but in role-playing levels of detail um which we're really excited for yeah um and i suppose showing that sort of breadth and, and depth of it, it it also includes um a grim and perilous rule set which dials the power level down a little bit and um, just to make the idea of like being in this sort of cursed city perched on the edge of the shish nadir uh, you know death and vampires everywhere and um, making that all the more sort of like horrifying and scary mm. um so the grim and perilous rule set were is quite nice and does a nice job of making that i think yeah set. Extra bit of peril. Really hits the theme of the of the setting well, yeah. isn't it? Of, of uh, Ulfenkarn. Yeah. Yeah. So Ulfenkarn we're excited for. And Runes of the Past uh, will be out after that, which we're also excited for. Um, and that's, a again, talking about the breadth of the Mortal Realms, that's a big collection of adventuring locations spread throughout the realms. Um, all of them with like interesting characters, interesting um, sort of plot hooks and events and locations and maps mm. that let you kind of grab that find one of them that's interesting and you'll definitely find at least one of them extremely interesting pop that into your game as a location or take several of them and string them together in a campaign that mm. spans the, the realms yeah um, so it really does illustrate well i think the breadth of the of the, of the mortal realms as a setting yeah isn't it? it's um uh, lots of inspiration there for for sort of like things that you'll that will spark in your memory yeah yeah there's a there's a great one that's set in a sort of a forest in shaman and you've always like yeah. metallic trees and you're mixing um it's just a really great setting. You're sort of mixing these sort of natural elements with these like sort of yeah. forged elements. Um, I think it's definitely, it's, and that stuff. I mean, where, where you know I fell in love with the mortal realms was just like the the sheer kind of like um, uh, imaginative possibilities that exist within those settings is just it's limitless. Isn't it? It's very cool. Yeah, it's, it's I think appealing for players, but it's appealing for designers too. Yeah, like we yeah. can find a little bit and make a mark on it and insert all these fascinating locations. Yeah, yeah. So in, in the case of Ruins of the Past, indeed. Know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're very excited for that. 
Um, but <sighs> I, I, there is sort of like a cloud on the horizon. There is. Like, a it's bit. not all good. News, yeah. Is it? There's. Uh, I have horns. I heard. I think. Um, yeah. And uh, rats. Um, yeah. There was uh, brass hounds. Yeah. The bellowing of great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So mm. 2024, we're uh, <laughs> sort of declaring a little bit in advance uh, as the year of chaos for um, Age of Sigmar Soul Event. So yeah. uh, the first book that will be out. Um, or the next book rather it'll be out after um, Ruins of the Past uh, we're currently calling Champions of Chaos but we're probably going to retitle that because if you've seen our other Champions mm -hmm. of books uh, Champions of Order Destruction Death they add player archetypes and tons of new options and work with the core um, Soulbound rules of course but they're like expansions to that Champions of Chaos um, name pending is actually a whole new entry point to um, Age of Sigmar Soulbound so it's the same familiar rule set that you love um, but it, it, it's a book purely aimed at players that want to depict mm. um, chaos aligned characters, uh, servants of Archeon and all sorts of other yep. um, bad people, <laughs> like awful people. Yeah. Um, I think it was, the more we got into it, we, we started off developing it as a, a book of life, yeah. the other champions ones. Um, but yeah, the, the, the more we got into it, the more we realized, well, well, this actually is a completely different premise, really, that we're starting yeah. from in a very different uh, um, set up and you know, sort of yeah. things like, that you'll do, so the, the adventures that you'll have. So yeah. If um, you read the Soulbound Core rule book, you could come away with the erroneous yeah. assumption that Sigmar is in some way good, uh, which is just, <laughs> um, terrible. He's a tyrant on a throne and must be torn down from yeah. it. So uh, it needs to be corrected in some way. Yeah, it? So, exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, so the, the themes <laughs> and the adventures and so on are, are, are quite different. Um, so it, it, it warrants, I think, a whole new entry point. To yeah. it. So Absolutely. if you haven't picked up Age of Sigmar Soulbound yet, Here's your chance because you you know you didn't want to work with or for or near Sigmar. Uh, here is your opportunity to dive into the setting from a whole new point of view. Yeah. Um, so I think it's going to be great for existing fans because it's a ton of new stuff and new material. Um, but also for new fans that you know enjoy uh, slightly more chaotic games. I think they'll enjoy yeah, it a lot absolutely. too. Absolutely. And the I think that the 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 the, uh, the rule book. Um, of yeah. Champions of Chaos, um, that'll cover uh, loads of archetypes um, yeah. drawn from the um, uh, the what's the word? Um, the they're not the upper echelons, are they? But they're they're, they're not the the lower either. It, it's it's a no the most of, infamous yeah, <laughs> of, yeah. Um, yeah quite, quite a similar power level I suppose to the um, a lot of the archetypes in Soulbound. Soulbound. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so that's your kind of like fairly high end, yeah. um, powerful. Generals and lieutenants and, and yeah, influential. that's the default kind of yeah, setting. exactly. And then we'll be following up uh, with um, the Path of Glory. Yeah, so the Path of Glory is um, pretty excited for this one as well. So yeah. this is an add-on book. Um, it's um, going to include the sort of same grim and perilous rules that we have in um, Ulfenkarn, um, because the focus is going to be on more your sort of like war cry warband level of servants of chaos, the sort of people who. Um, may not even know the true names of the ruinous mm -hmm. powers and just sort of have a general idea that you know there is a feathered god of change who um, has blessed them with certain gifts and who if they impress enough yeah. um, they may be able to ascend uh, and become like a true favorite servant of so um it's yeah that's going to be an exciting book as well lots of yeah. new archetypes in that one uh, and an exploration of some fairly new locations too so we're pretty excited for, yeah absolutely for that um yeah so that's again a different kind of storytelling so year of chaos it can't just be one book it has to be a few absolutely yeah um, and we've got the campaign as well will be uh yeah a chaos campaign for um, chaos campaign that should be exciting for people as well um so yeah yeah no i'm looking forward to that to one particularly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, awesome cool Cool. Uh, great. Yeah. So um, the script tells me we should now talk about Wrath and Glory. And what? Never forty thousand Wrath and Glory. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yes. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So yeah, as Podrick mentioned earlier on, that is our um, high action and adventure um, role playing game set in the Warhammer Forty Thousand universe. Uh, so it's um, the, the 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 divide. I think that the um, uh, as we were saying with 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 Imperial Maledictum, uh, that's about the investigative, the, um, the the political things that are going on, and uh, yeah. the, the the conspiracies within the shadows of hives and and things like that. Um, yeah, Wrath and Glory is more of the um, yeah the 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 action focused. Um, yeah, the individuals. I'm really wondering there, aren't you, you portray <laughs> um, far more like sort of capable individuals who who are many of them like small militaries onto their own uh, by their own in their own right um, <laughs> yeah. so you're you're that's where you play a space marine um 
that's where you could be like a Drakari um, Archon. Like you can play extremely high end archetypes in Wrath and Glory, and you know lay waste to your foes and face yeah. down some of the really worst threats that the galaxy has to offer. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm back. I'm focused. This is good. Um, that's great. So leave yeah. all that in. Don't put <laughs> any of that. It's crucial. Um, the, so the, the the last book out was Redacted Records 2, which uh, I really enjoyed because it focused on one of my favorite factions, the Adeptus Mechanicus, yeah. alongside the Adeptus Ministorum. So it has like a ton of new archetypes in there. I think there's eight altogether um, playing uh, like Electro Priests and um, Novitiates and so on, and the uh, Adeptus Sororitas. Uh, and uh, loads of new talents and some new sort of like faith based sort of miracles and rituals and things. There's there's lots in there. So that's out now in PDF and will be in stores um, later on. Um, but then following up from that, we're looking at Vow of Absolution, which is our Space Marine focus book that's yep. based around the Absolvers chapter, um, which is uh, sort of the chapter that um, once, perhaps erroneously and with regret, swore to defend the Gilead system uh, against mm -hmm. all foes uh, and who are now um, <laughs> stuck you know, there. Well, pushed the very, yeah, now stuck there, and um, yeah. but pushed the very brink um, by it. So, um, Vow of Absolution is going to move on a little bit of the plot of the Gilead system yeah. and of the Absolver specifically, but also just provide tons of archetypes mm -hmm. for Space Marines of all sorts. Um, so there's a lot of like Absolver specific like lore and, and really cool stuff in there that I think is great. Yeah. Um, but if you want to play Space Marines of any stripe, this is the book to grab. Yep. So very excited mm -hmm. for that. Um, then we also have Eldarian Herns of Embers coming up after that one, which has been teased for a good while. Um, so lots of people know a little bit about it already. But if you don't know, that is your you want to play Xenox, specifically Eldari, of any stripe, um, from like Craft Worlders to um, Drakari, uh, true Harlequins, um, true Corsairs. There's archetypes for everything in there, frameworks to sort of getting them all working. Um, not quite together, but you know, in different mixes. Um, <laughs> Drakari play bad with others, um, yeah. but we've exploration of like those factions generally, and also specifically in the Gilead system, mm -hmm. uh, and even taking a little look at um, a specific part of Kamora and um, that has a, a pathway to Gilead from which Drakari raiders uh, like to emerge. Um, so that's got tons of stuff and a really comprehensive armory. And if, if you've been wanting to get away from Imperium focused stuff mm. uh, and you really love the Eldari that is the book for you um, so really good yeah. uh, and then I guess looking forward we've lots of other plans uh, mm -hmm. and yeah. quite a few of them sort of like go beyond the Cicatrix Manedictum I think indeed yes so uh, so far um, the everything that we have done for Roth and Glory has been set within the Gilead system so cut off by the um, the massive warp storm um, of the, the Cicatrix yeah. um, mm -hmm. so uh, we are continuing with, um, with with the Gilead system um, but also moving beyond so uh, yeah that'll be interesting yeah. and stuff to watch out for next year so we've plans and books and adventures that we send Gilead but we'll also yeah. be looking out to the wider Imperium which is where we know a lot of people uh, like to play anyway and there's yeah. so much interesting stuff going on yeah. in wider Warhammer some of it very green that, some of it quite green yeah. Um, yeah there's some cool blue stuff too yeah oh but yeah there's dark green and then there's, there's <laughs> yeah there's, there's actually different flavors of green um, but yeah, yeah some really exciting stuff there so we, we want to make sure players can be a part of that and experience the events that they're reading about um uh, you know and experiencing and sort of like yep. closer to real time yeah uh, so yeah we're very excited for that too but yeah absolutely great. great um and we should pop on to warmer fantasy roleplay never yes. to be forgotten we've left it to the <laughs> end but in many ways yeah not the most beloved but maybe sometimes the most beloved uh, of certain members of, of, of the team you can't uh, make us choose yeah exactly <laughs> but um but yeah. five years of warhammer War fantasy, fantasy roleplay yeah. fourth edition um yeah that's Which, it's got by in a flash, isn't it? It has been, it's, uh, and it's been great. Um, yeah, you know, kicking off from the core rule book and the starter set. Yeah, yeah. The, the enemy within. The enemy within. Early enemy within. When I got on board. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that was really exciting, and yeah, and a, a wild time. So that's that's been great. And yeah. since then, we've um, sort of been exploring, um, especially recently, some of areas yeah. that are a little bit mm. outside. Um, well, new parts of the empire. New parts of the empire, yeah. and then so, getting beyond. So yeah, I think Solzmund, um is um, in stores now. I think, isn't it? In so, stores, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah Salzman's in stores. Yes. Um, Winds of Magic was was really great to do as well, which um, mm. sort of like explored magic as it's practiced yeah. throughout the empire uh, in the time of Karl Franz. So that's been that's been great. Salzmund is a sort of a a, a, a seaside trading port that's that's sort of not quite on the coast. It's down a, a big river. Um, but it's it's got an awful lot of um, interesting stuff in there, cool NPCs. It, it's a nice new location that hadn't been explored um, very much at all before, so it was great yeah, to have the yeah. Salzamund. 
Um, and it being a port also led naturally into Sea of Claws. Yes. Um, which is our big sort of maritime book, I suppose you could call it. Yeah. Um, an exploration of the Sea of Claws and the surrounds, but also rules for like naval warfare and shipbuilding and yeah. um, sea combat and sort of like sea themed um, careers for characters as well. Or simply messing about in boats. Yeah, mucking about in boats. That's um, what I've, <laughs> most of what I understand navies do. I've <laughs> passing, uh, passing knowledge of it. Um, and that naturally leads to other areas as well. So Lustria um, is not in stores yet, but it's out now in PDF mm -hmm. and on for pre-order. Uh, and also will be um, mucking about in the sea fairly soon, I think, as well. Yeah. Uh, and coming to stores, a store near you. So Lustria is an exploration of um, Lustria, <laughs> naturally enough, which yeah. is um, sort of like the last bastion of yeah. um, maybe the old ones and the, the, the slan, and they're sort of like direct mm -hmm. servants in um, the Warhammer world. Yeah. So uh, it's, and Warhammer first fancy role plays first dive into Lustria. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. So uh, I mean, I think that kind of shows kind of our uh, what, what we're trying to do is you know, expand out some of the the things that um, maybe people are more familiar with, but also taking the game to places where it hasn't been before. So uh, yeah, and that's going to continue for well forever. Yeah, so yeah, uh, so yeah. We, we do want to kick <laughs> on with that. So yeah, looking a little further ahead, which I think is what we want to know about too, like what's coming down the road. I bet we've got um, so an elf and dwarf focus book. On the end, and uh, that's two books. Two books. We wouldn't yeah. put them in the same book. Oh. That's sort of fight. No. Um, just... Yeah. So we would like an. We're doing an elf focus book that's going to deal fairly heavily with uh, some high elves and uh, some lo locations on uh, Ultuan and B. Mm -hmm. I think a really great source for again getting outside the empire or yeah. doing a really detailed sort of like high elf character um, who's involved in adventures in the empire, of course, as well. Um, and then a dwarf focus book that's we're really excited for as well. That's uh, it's well into production at this point, which is great. Yeah. Um, and we're seeing some really cool stuff come out of that. Yeah. Uh, some very stocky looking dwarfs for the cover I saw recently as well. Yeah. So excited for that. Um, and that, that's a, a real focus on um, sort of like dwarfs and their their holes, um, careers, um, rune smithing. I know people are desperate for it and it's in there. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, lots of really cool um, dwarf stuff that I think people are going to love. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, beyond that, we're also looking to... There's a cloud on the horizon as well. Isn't there it? is. There is indeed. Yeah, so I think outside of the enemy within, we haven't done an awful lot with Chaos and the Ruinous mm -hmm. Powers, uh, and we want to do that. So we're looking to some, um, a selection of books coming out after this that are going to deal with uh, sort of chaotic forces. Um, so we want to look into some like demons and demonology and the powers of the dark. There are powers, a campaign I'd love to do. Yeah, um, that's Absolutely. it's penciled in there somewhere, but that one's a little bit away. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so some nice new chaos focused stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I forgot one from earlier from sort of like ports and new locations section. Oh, one of the most famous. Oh, ports indeed, in indeed. the old world. Yeah. Um, so we want to do a city book for uh, Marienburg, um, which I think this this is, is the first time we're announcing that one. Uh, I think it is. Yes, I think, I think it, it is. is. So, yeah. Marienburg was a much beloved location in former editions of Warm Fantasy Roleplay, yeah. and we're really looking forward to going back to it. And we're working with, I think, some of the the exact right people on that one. Uh, <laughs> if you've if you're familiar with some of the original yeah. uh, material, so we're really really looking forward to yeah, Marienburg that's gonna be great. as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, new locations, uh, elves, dwarves, chaos. Yeah, lots of stuff coming for Warm Fantasy Roleplay. Yeah, no, nope. can't wait. It's gonna be great. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, cool. So, um, yeah, this I think that that's more or less where <laughs> I, I end. There's probably already exists, if you can click near this one or maybe it follows on for it, there'll be uh, so, something talking about some of our other activities. Um, yep. But yep. Uh, we'll uh, wrap this one up here. And yep. uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, uh, we will be back on your screen soon. Hey. Yeah, or if you're in Gen Con, <laughs> in person. In, uh, then go back in time and come and visit us. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, I just realized. I know, it's it is too confusing. Leave yeah. it to the old ones. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.